I welcome you guys again um, here with another video. I don't know if you guys have heard uh, the recent news. Um, well, it's recent to me. Um, I saw an article online that talked about Byron Leftwich being a possible, um, due to the changes that have gone on in Colorado, obviously we know that Sean Lewis, the offensive coordinator, left. He's going to San Diego State. So that leaves a vacancy. And we understand that their players from Colorado that are going to be entering the portal and we understand that there are certain players that have been committed so there's a lot of changes going on in Colorado is it going to be for the better or the worse we don't know we're going to have to see how the season materializes next year we're going to have to see how the, how the team plays but Byron Leftwich is a candidate is a strong candidate to be the offensive coordinator to replace Sean Lewis um, many people are saying it's a good thing um, I even saw one guy's channel saying that it's a good thing because uh, of the connection that Byron Leftwich had with Tom Brady and the connection that Tom Brady has with Shador because he's a he, he mentors Shador and Shador has NIL NIL deal with um, with Brady um, however with that being said I don't always think that and then also they talked about Byron Leftwich having um, Super Bowl success and winning the Super Bowl with Brady but that to me is it's, it's, it's misleading in a way because just because he won a Super Bowl with Tom Brady, Tom Brady made a lot of coaches look good. He made Bill Belichick look good. He made Mike, uh, Mike McDaniels look good. Um, we've seen life without Brady, how McDaniels has looked. Everywhere he's went without Brady, he has not been successful. He went to you know Denver, he was not successful. He, he was gonna take a job at, with the Indianapolis Colts. He reneged on that. He got taken with, um, with with Oakland Raiders or the uh, Las Vegas Raiders and he got fired from that job so I mean before before Brian Leftwich was linked up with Brady what did he do what was he known for he got with Brady and won so that doesn't necessarily mean him coming to Colorado is going to be a success we still have to see how that plays out but I hear a lot of people saying what kind of style of offense does he run this is how I understand. This is what lets me know. This is what lets me understand that a lot of people don't know about football. It's not about you bringing your style to a team. It's about you assessing the personnel you have and you being you being vers versatile enough and you being flexible enough to actually make changes to fit your personnel. So if you come to a team and that you have a lot of speed and you have a quarterback who's probably not a great of a passer, then you have to probably change your offensive dynamic and incorporate plays that accentuates that feeds off of the strengths of your team. It's not about a coach bringing in their system. It's about a coach being savvy enough and being intellectual enough in terms of when it comes to the offensive schemes, being smart enough to actually say, okay, th this is my team and this is the layout, and this is how I want my team to run based upon what I have. So it's not you bringing in your system and having your place fit your system, it's you fitting what you have on, the, on your team. You changing your system to fit your personnel. So that's what we have to see. Because there's a lot of changes being done, I don't I don't know the I don't know how deep uh Byron Leftwich goes, but I hope it's not about names again. Um when I hear things that say ex Super Bowl or you no know, Super Bowl winning coach, that's just to me um attention grabbers that grabs your attention those oh, yo, he won a super bowl before so you automatically make the connection that because he had super bowl success that he's going to bring his success down to colorado now there's a difference with coaching nfl players and there's a difference in coaching college kids um you're coaching professionals that know what they're doing and when you're coaching college kids there are going to be a lot of flaws within your team and you have to have more patience as a college coach because you're coaching young men. You're, you're trying to coach them up to get on the level of being professional athletes or being professionals in the NFL. So um, I don't know if it's going to be a good fit. I mean, it's not even about the offensive coordinators. Again, to me, it's about who's going to be a good fit with Prime, who's going to be able to put their foot down and say, hey, Prime, this is what I'm going to run, and this is what's best for the team. Um, if Prime has this... Um, if Prime has the agenda of coming in next year, being pass heavy as he was this year, not having a balanced offense, then left which works out perfect for him. But is it going to equate to team success? We don't know that yet. Um, I've never seen a team that's in balance be successful. I mean, you could probably beat up on bad teams. When it gets down to playing good teams that have those quote-unquote dogs in the middle, you're not going to get away with passing every down because you become too predictable. So getting a coach like Byron Leftwich, who's worked with, 
with uh, Tom Brady. And we understand Tom Brady passes the ball. He gets the ball out of his hands quickly. We oftentimes didn't see that with Shador this year. You know, he had five wideouts, and a lot of the times he, Shador would hold on to the ball looking for the big splash play. And even when he did get the ball out of his hands quickly, it didn't really equate to much. You know, some of the receivers didn't break loose to break for those uh, large gains. So um, those are just things to consider. Um, right now, he's uh, he's reputable. Byron Leftwich is a good candidate only because he has NFL experience. He's done the job before. Um, he's worked with Brady. So those are positive things. But not because he won a Super Bowl, but the fact that he's worked with a Super Bowl winning quarterback and also because that quarterback has a connection with Shador. So there's, there's a there's a connection there with those three, which is a good thing. And I think bringing in somebody with that's familiar with Brady and, and bringing in somebody that's familiar with Shador is also good too because Brady understands Shador. He mentors him. So if you have a offensive coordinator that understands Brady, that offensive coordinator is more likely to understand Shador because most of Shador's um, training or mentorship is coming from Brady. Uh, in terms of you know pl ball placement, getting the ball out of your hand quickly, reading the field, reading the defenses. The unfortunate thing about Shador is that he couldn't, he wasn't able to read defenses because by the time he hiked the ball, I would a lot of the times I would watch the game, I would go a thousand one, a thousand two, like right at two seconds he already has somebody sitting in his lap. A quarterback needs at least at minimum three three point five seconds to read the field to get rid of the ball. Two seconds is not enough. A thousand one, that that's too quick. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Tom Brady. If you don't have time to assess the field, you're not going to make good throws. You're going to get sacked or throw interceptions. So, um, so again, tell me what you guys think about Byron Leftwich. Um, I think, I don't know what to think. It, to me, you can bring in the best offensive coordinator in the world. How is that offensive coordinator going to gel with Coach Prime, a very strong personality on the team that has an agenda with his son, and how is that offensive coordinator going to be able to get the best out of his offense underneath the helicoptering of coach prime over his son being a helicopter parent and we understand it yeah we get it all parents are passionate about their kids but when you're the coach of the of the quarterback and you have a inflated sense of of grandeur towards your son as if he can't do any wrong he's the best thing since sliced bread then you're going to think that it doesn't matter where you put your son that he's going to succeed and that's not reality even as great as, as, as Brady was, he still needed the help of his teammates. So I think that there are other facets of the team that needs to be shored up. Um, this year, I want, what would give me hope about next season if I hear that a bunch of recruits, a bunch of offensive linemen and defensive linemen are coming to Colorado? Good ones that could be developed. But it takes time to develop those lines. If you're going through the portal, then you're, you're more likely looking for quick success. And that's what Prime is looking for. He's not looking to get young redshirt freshmen or young freshmen or even young sophomore linemen and develop them. It takes too long. He's looking for dogs now that are already developed. He's not looking for puppies. He's looking for dogs, mature, mature dogs to come in and get the job done. We'll see if that happens. I would like for it to happen. But the patience of Prime is a problem. He wants to see success immediately. And I think with that type of mindset, it come, there, there comes consequences. There are natural results or natural logical consequences that comes with that. When you're trying to quickly be successful, you, you sort of skip out on the details. The impatience doesn't allow you to pay attention to the little things. You're only focused on the, on the agenda of your son being successful. You want to bring in a quarterback, uh, an offensive coordinator that's going to work with your son and, and provide him with an offense that's going to make him be great. But you have to look at the totality of your offense. You have to look at your offensive line. You have to look at your skill players. What kind of offense do we need to implement that will bring out the best of everybody? Not just the best of Shador. We do have a... There's a running back for 2025 that decommitted. He's, he's in the class of 2025, I believe. Yes. 2024. Yeah, 2025. He had, he had verbally committed, but he pulled back out. Not they're not they're not going to be too many running backs that are going to be excited to come to Colorado. Not after what they saw this year, you know. Prime didn't put on a good display of the use of his running backs, and I'm going to say Prime. Some of you guys are divided on that. Some of you guys think it was an uh, offensive coordinator. It was. It wasn't. I had somebody who left a comment on my page that said that um, they watched Well Off Media, and it showed that 
coach prime is not a micromanager that he allows his coaches to do what they want yes to a certain degree he's not a micromanager for sure but he's not going to allow you to take that ball out of his son's hands you better make sure his son throws that damn ball so um i don't believe that he just allowed because if he really really allowed the coaches especially the offensive coordinator to do what he wanted they would not be throwing the ball that much you don't think coach sean lewis saw the ineptitude of the offensive line some of those offensive line came from kent state and he ran the ball at Kent State. He ran the ball. He didn't run the ball much all of a sudden that he linked up with Prime. He all of a sudden forgot how to do that. What's the common denominator in that? What's the common factor in that? The common factor is Coach Prime. And the common factor is that the son is the quarterback. And if the quarterback does not have the ball in his hand, then the quarterback can't showcase his talents and have the statistics to back up his greatness. So how, so how can we get... How can he get the stats to match the talent. Well, I need this I need the ball in my son's hand to throw it. That's what happened. And I think when I think when Sean Lewis wanted to run the ball more, there was a conflict. And that's why I called coach Sean Lewis stepped down. And I don't um I don't, Byron Leftwich, his philosophy, I mean in, in NFL he ran the ball. I think it was something that they did to set up the pass. So hopefully he brings in that type of philosophy to run to pass. So pretty much Make your offense a running offense, and, and then base your pass off the base your passing off the run. That's going to allow Colorado to have bigger splash plays, pass less, but make the passing that you do incorporate more effective. So it becomes a quality over quantity. You're not throwing the ball a lot, but the few times you are throwing it, you're getting big gains, and you're keeping the defense off balance. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's not it's not written in stone just yet. It's a consideration. A lot of people are thinking that Byron Left, which is going to be the next offensive coordinator for Colorado. We'll see how that goes. And um, again, just because he had success with Tom Brady doesn't mean he's going to automatically have success at Colorado. We have to actually see the players that are there next year, who's leaving, who's staying. And uh, we know for sure Travis Hunter and uh, Shiloh and Shador are going to be there. But there's going to be a lot of movement. A lot of movement. I don't foresee the, the team being the same in terms of the personnel. We have to see who they have. I know Dylan Edwards is still there. I'm not hearing him leaving, so I'm sure he's still going to be there. Wilkerson, I don't know how many years of eligibility he has left. I have to look that up. But we have to see. We have to see. And um, I hope it works out. I really do hope it works out because I just want to see Colorado do well. That same belief that I had when he first came, when he came to Colorado saying that I'm going to come and bring my Louis luggage, I mean, I love that. I had nothing against the speech. All I'm saying is that if you're going to talk that big, then you better be smart enough to run your program to a point where it's 100% football with no personal agendas involved. You have to be patient enough to, to, to develop those men. You know, just the process of the way the season went, the way, the way Prime handled certain things I did not like. And sometimes he tends to put his foot in his mouth by saying certain things and and contradicting himself but i mean he's human he's human but if i if i could give him advice i would just say talk less at the mic make it short and sweet and get out of there and focus on your team don't focus on the media and try to get people to see things your way don't talk about you know where to find me because you're not that hot of a commodity anymore coach prime if players that you have are leaving you and players are decommitted who initially committed yeah they don't know where to find you I think at this point, you need to hurry and try to figure out a way to find them. So again, tell me what you guys think about Byron Leftwich and what you think about, if you know anything about his offensive philosophy, write a comment. Let me know what you think and do you think that he'll be a good fit at Colorado? But again, I think that fitting, at a, fit, fitting with a team is based upon the personnel. And right now, we don't know what that offensive, uh, what the offensive team is going to look like to see how Byron Leftwich can, can get the best out of that team. All right, thank you guys for listening. All right.